Oh my. Oh my dear, are you? Are you okay? Well, I'm, I'm so sorry you had to come in when no one was here. I, I assume the house let you in, sensing you really needed help, and by the looks of it, you most certainly do. Um, let me, let me put these down really fast. Um, I'll just... Okay. What exactly happened here? Well, darling, you're covered in mud. Head to toe. You... You look as if someone threw you into a pond. Um, and you've got... Well, your face is covered in mud, and your clothes are covered in mud, and you've got some scrapes on your face, and you have... Is that moss? Is that... Pond weed in your hair? You, you truly look like you were thrown into a, a mud puddle and then dipped in a pond. You were thrown into a mud puddle. Forgive an old woman for the obvious question. Why? I wouldn't believe you if you told me. Well, um, the benefit of being a very old mage is that I have seen a lot. You will find there's very little I, I don't believe these days. So... Please explain. A small... child-sized, very strong... Frog, turtle esque creature demanded to wrestle you for your honor. Oh no. Webbed hands. Beak. Kind of greenish bluish. Shell. Yeah, you, um. You met. Izumi? Yeah, uh, but that's the other side of the forest. What were you doing? You think you took a wrong turn. I think it's safe to say you took quite a few. Uh, okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get you cleaned up. I promise you I will explain the creature that you unfortunately wrestled in a mud puddle with. And I can explain why, too. Um, would you like a cup of tea? No, just to be cleaned up. Understandably so. I can't do much for that situation, but I can fix this situation. I can get you cleaned up, get any cuts and scrapes disinfected um, for the rest of the body. You're going to need something a little more in-depth than what I've got here, so I'll give you instructions to get you down to Clear Bell. Uh, you're gonna look for the inn right before you cross the bridge into Fairpoint Port. She'll take great care of you there, okay? Okay, but let's, let's get this fixed up. Um, but still, what, what were you doing on that side of the Okay, you were trying to get to... Oh, you were trying to get to Clearbell. Yeah, that's the other way. Um, okay, I'll give you directions to where you were trying to go, and we'll go from there. Okay, I think first, um, I'm going to address the hair situation, because you have... Do you, do you care if I touch you? Okay, great. Um, Got a lot going on up there. So um, let's get.
get that first. And we'll see what else we can uncover. Okay, let's... Um, maybe I can find a use for this? To be honest, it's been a while since I've visited our dear friend Izume. Um, so, Izume is a kappa, um, a water sprite. Not as malicious as some. Some Kappas are excessively violent and unkind. Um, lucky for you, he is quite tame, considering the fact that he and I have a lovely little truce. Um, I'm not even gonna look. So, where do I even begin? As you are now well aware, um, Kappas love to wrestle. They're mischievous little tricksters. They are childlike in size, he won't get any bigger than that. Does have a beak, does have a shell. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're... Mm, they're, they're tricky little guys. Um, most don't really live around here. Um, he's kind of one of the rare few that have come up this far. Most are further south, um, which is great news for us because, like I said, not all of them are as tame as Azume is. They, um... How do I put this delicately? Kappas are water sprites that believe that there is a magical uh, ball of power that uh, other bipeds hold in their um, sphincter. Yeah. Um, and so they like to try to get this ball of power that doesn't really exist, but for some reason their belief system doesn't allow them to comprehend that. So, some are very unkind, some um, do try to drag people down to the depths and drown them for food. Um, no, 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 you're good. It's fine, it's fine, you're fine. Uh, you made it, you're good. Um, they also really don't like cows and horses for some reason and have been known to to drag them down into the depths as well. But the good news is, aside from human flesh, uh, Kappas love cucumbers. They're strange. They're strange little creatures. Um, they're also very honor-bound. So, you are spared from the um, orb of Power uh, seeking because once upon a time, goodness, how long ago was that? I had the misfortune of running into him in the forest myself, and thankfully, I was in fact tending a garden that same day, and I just so happened to have cucumbers on hand. As fate would have it, um, he wanted the cucumbers desperately so. He informed me that it was either the cucumber or my, I think it was my right arm. Yes, I believe, I believe he was starting to eat my right arm. Um, but something else you must know about Kappas is that they have a small little divot on the top of their head, which I'm sure you actually saw um, when you were wrestling with him in the mud. How did that go, by the way? Did you win? No, you didn't win. He, he just felt so sorry for you that he, that you go. That's, that's rough. I'm sorry. Um, so they have that bowl on the top of their head, and they um, well, it's filled with water. Uh, seeing as they are water sprites, 
that water that is in that divot is somewhat where their power is held. So if while wrestling you can get them to tip over and drain that bowl of water on their head, um, you can drain them of their power. And then you can, um, it really depends on the kappa itself. Most of the time, they're very honorable creatures, aside from the arm and flesh eating and all that. Um, they'll typically offer to be your lifelong loyal friend after threatening your life. Um, if you best them in wrestling or get the water out of the bowl on their head. There. There, it's a strange water sprite. Honestly, as far as sprites go, they're quite... well, most are quite tame. Um, I mean, you really got a lot stuck in here, didn't you? It's, it's quite impressive, really. Um, but anyway, this story, I was challenged to either give him my cucumber or give him my right arm, and seeing as I took personal offense to both being requested, Knowing a little bit about Kappas, I did then bow to him, which is something you can do if you find yourself in the situation, because if the, you can get them to bow back, they might just drain their bowl of water. And I bowed very, very, very low as to show him the most amount of honor I possibly could, and he was so impressed with my bow that he bowed back to me, thus tricking him Having bested him in the battle of wits, he then promised to be my lifelong loyal companion, uh, to which I told him, no, it's fine, you can stay in this pond, uh, but you must promise me to never harm this forest's inhabitants, ever, and I will promise you to bring you a steady supply of cucumbers and companionship, and I'll come and chat with you for a little bit every so often. As it turns out, Kappas have a shocking amount of medicinal knowledge, and they're one of the few sprites, actually, that have the capacity to learn other creatures' languages. Most just uh, kind of enchant their speech, or speak straight into your mind. It's always very unpleasant. I find it leaves me quite nauseous afterwards. Um, but, so he, he has learned few different languages, and I take him cucumbers now and chat with him about some medicinal things. Um, but occasionally, if someone does wander that far down into the woods, this. It's been a while. Uh, I did block that path for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, but you're okay. Mostly. Um, yeah, let me... let me get a rag. Cleaned up the rest of the way, okay? Yeah, okay. So. Okay. So I am just going to take this bowl of water here. A rag and wipe your lovely, lovely face off because you could use it. You could use a full dunk in a hot spring, to be frank, but <laughs> fresh out of hot springs, so. Are you feeling okay at least? As good as to be expected after getting wrestled to the mud by a child size smaller sprite. That's fair. Um, I do apologize. Maybe I should really put a Kappa warning sign up. Most around here don't know what they are, though, so I don't really know if that would help or hurt the situation. But again, you really should be on that side of the woods anyway. It's quite dark over there, and there's all sorts of nasty creatures in these woods. You really should be much more careful than that. for 
stress him out of mud, truly. For what it's worth, I'm sure he was quite proud of your effort. Not very comforting. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, they... I don't quite know why they like wrestling so much. That was never really explained to me. I was a little too afraid to ask. Um, but I do know that they're just very... Very mischievous little things. No, 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 no. Then no, this is free of charge. You don't owe me anything. No, these are these are my words, and it's my job to take care of the inhabitants that wander through and come across the creatures that I've allowed to live here. Some some I have agreements with. Some live here on their own accord and there's not much I can do aside from tell people to stay out. Do what you can, and besides, the Council of Wardens was knocking at my door just the other day already, so... Oh, it's just a, a misunderstanding. You know how these things go with the Council of Wardens and all. <laughs> we all have our run-ins, don't we? You've never had a run-in with the Council? Well, it's probably because you're not on their watch list. We misunderstanding about a gentleman who came knocking at my door wanting a love potion and I was assuring him that one, those do not exist two, the thing that people have created to make you think it exists is quite dangerous and ill-advised and really quite uh, not ethical um, so I informed him uh, in kindly that I would not be making him anything of the sort and he could kick rocks on his way out um, to which he ensured me that he would report me to the council and I assured him that they've been trying to get me on something for years now and it's not like they're gonna start actually getting something now um, and then, you know, he tossed a few insults my way and then asked for a sleeping potion and that was very suspicious um, so I turned him into a toad I mean, what am I gonna do? just let some weirdo run around? but I don't, I don't think so, no so I turned him into a toad and then I had a council member on my doorstep the very next day asking about a very suspicious incident with a toad that was talking and claiming um, quite adamantly that I had turned him from a human into a toad and that it sounded exactly like something I would do Naturally, I assured him that the toad must be crazy and I had no idea what he was talking about hmm. well, Of course I didn't turn him back into a human He's trying to get the love potions. No, he can I did put a loophole in the toad spell, if it makes you feel any better. The day that he can actually make someone like him, for who he is, instead of putting weird things in their food, um, then he'll turn back into a human. Until that day, he is stuck with his outer appearance looking quite like his inner appearance in my mind. So, I don't remember why I was telling you that story. Council. Yeah. Um, ultimately, you don't owe me anything for this because they already had a few run-ins with me this week alone. Um, and if you go back to the capital now and um, tell them that a creature that I have an agreement with in my woods 
wrestled you to the ground and um, threatened you. You could imagine how that might look bad for me. So, I take care of you. You don't go to the council. Everyone's happy, right? Right. Perfect. Okay. Just about cleaned up here. So where were you trying to get to anyway? Oh, Cordelia's, yes. Yes, I know her. I absolutely adore Cordelia. Mm hmm Well, darling, if you were trying to answer one of her summons, then Clear Bell is not the place to find her, although you did not hear that from me. No. No, dear. Cordelia does not hang out in Clear Bell often. Well, unless she's in the tavern, but the letter said you'd find her there? Letter. Is she putting together another crew? Oh, how exciting! What did this one say it was for? Oh. Oh, I might have to give her a list, actually, to take. See if she can bring me back anything from that region. Oh, how fun. Mm-hmm. Cordelia is very well known around here. Yes. No, you won't find her in Clear Bell, although I will still give you the directions to there because you could use it. And although Cordelia might be one of the fiercest and most fiery ship captains in, in many known ports, she does value appearance highly so, so I would recommend really really cleaning yourself up before asking to be one of our crew members. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to spot her. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, you're serious? Oh, well, I just assumed that if you were answering one of the crew requests she put out, um, that you had heard her tales. Well, that's strange. Well, she'll be very happy to tell them to you. <laughs> All you have to do to find Cordelia usually just listened for whoever is barking orders the loudest. But if you are looking for physical characteristics, just look for the trail of long red hair sticking out from beneath the captain's hat, a crow on the shoulder, and a very impressively carved pipe from the horn of a horn squid she hunted down in the northern She is a character, and I absolutely adore her. If you can't find her that way, then look for our ship, the Dancing Druid. It's a beautiful thing to behold. She's very proud of it, as she should be. Alright. I think... I think that's the last of it. I think we've got you cleaned up. Now let's take this... all cleaned up and I can't see that lovely face of yours. You do have a few cuts as I suspected. Nothing too major or harmful, but considering you were rolling around in the muck with a kappa, it probably would be wise for me to go ahead and clean those out for you, okay? Well, no, I won't need to use magic for that. I can't just go using magic for everything. Then I'd just be showing off. one right above your eyebrow here, and then the one on this cheek here. It looks like you managed to avoid anything else, but I'll definitely give you a good check while I clean too, just to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to need some orb weaver spider silk and some antiseptics. a fresh batch in just the other day. Lucky for you. Unlucky for the spiders. No, we have an understanding. They hide out in my uh, other building. The one where I keep the stinky, smelly, bad, awful potion ingredients in. That's the one. I'm not putting that in my house. They hang out in there. 
and weave their little webs. And then as rent payment, I get to gather these. They're beautiful and they are absolutely perfect for any sort of wound care. Ingredient in a lot of potions actually too. Quite useful little things. This batch. A little bit of homemade antiseptic. A little will go a long way with this, so we shouldn't need too much. It shouldn't, no, it won't burn too much. It's orange in color because of some of the ingredients that I use, uh, one of which is a numbing agent. So that whenever I apply it, instead of you feeling a burn of an antiseptic, you just kind of have a general pain reliever applied instead. Okay. Is that doing okay for you? Okay, good. Right up here. It's not too big. It should heal pretty quickly, actually. No, you won't need a healing potion for this one. Besides healing potions, they are not that cracked up to be. They don't quite do whatever. Everyone just assumes that a healing potion instantly heals everything that could ever possibly be wrong with you. Not the case. It can speed up the healing unless you have a very, 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 very strong healing potion. Your body is still going to need to claim its healing through sleep. Most of the time, you'll need to eat more sleep more, even if you take a potion, actually, especially if you take a potion. Because what the body would have normally claimed through natural processes is now sped up, so you'll find yourself ravenous and very sleepy. Okay. I think... Should have you right as rain in no time. Well, maybe I'll send a letter with you to Cordelia. Tell her what a lovely time you and I had together. And that she should definitely, definitely consider you for her ship crew. Her crow. Her crow's name is Edward. she and I communicate whenever she's not in the area. He's 
a very clever little thing. Cordelia jokes that no self-respecting captain should have a parrot for a pet. Then again, I'm not so sure most would consider Cordelia a captain. So much as a pirate herself. <laughs> but you didn't hear that from me. If it's adventure that you seek, you will certainly find it on the Dancing Druid. again. It's for the state of your clothes. I'm not really sure what to do about that one, but we'll get you at least into clear bell to be cleaned up, okay? Okay. Now, if I give you basic instructions, can you follow them, or would you like me to send you with a map just to be sure? Okay. Good. Good. If you follow the path straight out that door, it's enchanted. No harm can befall you on your way, but you have to stay on the path in between those rocks, okay? It's going to take you straight down to Corsair's Cove. That is going to be where you find Cordelia and her ship most of the time if she's not in Clearbell and Fairpoint Port, okay? In order to get to Clearbell, again, stay on that path. Instead of taking a left, you'll take a right up north. That will get you to the main town. Others can direct you from there. The inn is hard to miss. Okay. You can stop by the tavern too. Looks like you might need it. <laughs> okay. Well, best of luck to you. Please don't go traipsing through the woods off the path ever again lest you meet something a little less mischievous and a little bit more intense. Okay. And maybe don't go telling everyone there's a cabin in the woods. Yeah. Probably best for both of us if you don't do that. Alright. Well, fair winds and farewell, friends.